Hey guys, welcome back to Big Box Shock where we're helping you become a better and more successful deer hunter. In today's video, I'm gonna show you guys the process that I do for grinding up your meat and turning it into burger and sausage and how to vacuum seal and the process that I do with all that. So glad you guys are here. Hope this helps you out. All right, so usually I do for the hamburger and the sausage, I usually do about a pound of uh, beef fat for every five pounds of venison meat, roughly. But but this breakfast sausage, I want it to be a little bit more fatty to give it some more flavor. So I'm gonna do pretty close to half and half, maybe a little less, maybe 60, 40, uh, 60 venison, 40 um, pork fat. So. I always put a little bit of fat in and then put some venison behind it so that it doesn't fog down the grinder and get all nasty in there. Well, we had to take the pan off from underneath it because it was too tall. All right, guys, so we've got all of our Breakfast sausage ground up here. You gotta mix it up good. Make sure it's all mixed up nice, evenly. Looks pretty good, it's gonna be good. So, take this package, uh, one of these packages of sausage mix and dump it in. Like I said, this treat's 14 pounds, but we like it a little stronger. So, we got about 10 pounds in here that we're doing. Do about half of this of fennel seeds. And then mix that up until it's all evenly coated and mixed in there. And then we're gonna bag it up. All right guys, we got some bags made up. Like I said before, I write the month and the day that I shot the deer on, on these bags. Um, if you guys go longer than a year or don't eat that much meat throughout the season, throughout the summer and whatnot, uh, I would write the year as well, just so you don't get it mixed up with any fresh meat. So I just take a ball of meat Kind of a small one to start just to get the bag open put it in there you can do as much as you want i usually do about a pound and a half or so depending on how big of a breakfast you you make we usually make small breakfasts so so i'll bag them all up like that and then seal them up after i'm done all right, guys, we decided that we're not gonna do our hunter sausage this time. We're gonna wait for the next year to do that. So we're gonna go straight to the burger. So again, it's pretty much the same process. We're gonna use the, the big hole plate for the coarser cut to start it off. And again, every time you put fat in, Follow it with a piece of venison or a couple pieces. Kind of push that fat out of the auger.
All right, guys, so now that we got the first grind done, mix it up real good, get everything mixed in real good, get it all evenly, the fat evenly distributed throughout the venison. And then we're gonna switch our plates out and go with the fine, the fine, cor the fine grind. All right guys, we've run through our second course of grinding and as you can see, we've got perfectly good hamburger. Gonna be lots of good goulash and chili and enchiladas and burgers and tacos, all kinds of stuff. We don't even buy regular beef burger. This is all we eat all year long, so it's good stuff. Uh, so next guys, we're gonna take all this and bag it all up and vacuum seal it. I usually do about two pounds in these, usually plenty for whatever dish we, we make. All right guys, as you can see here, we've got all of our burger bagged up. Now we're gonna head over to the food saver. Hey guys, before we get started vacuum sealing here, I just wanna let you guys know that if you don't have a vacuum sealer, don't let that deter you from processing your own deer. Um, I used Ziploc bags for years before I got one of these and it works just fine. They don't keep as long as the food saver bags do. You know, they don't keep your meat from getting freezer burnt as long. Uh, but it definitely works and it's, it's a perfectly good way to keep your meat, especially if you eat it a lot and you, you're going to go through it and not and use it all before the next season. So if you guys don't have one of these, save up a little bit of money, get yourself one, you won't regret it. But you can always use Ziplocs too if you don't have one. Okay guys, to start off, I like to take these, these food saver bags. I like to squish the meat down into the corners of it. As you can see, if you didn't do that, there's a little bit of air in there. Probably wouldn't make a difference, but I'm kind of particular about how I like my stuff. So I'll kind of pound it down, squeeze it down in there, get that those corners nice and full with meat. You wanna make sure that you don't have any meat up in here like this. So scrape that out of the way before you go to seal it. This particular food saver, close the lid, turn it to operate, hit back seal. Works great. It takes probably 10, I don't know, 10, 15 seconds per bag or so. Uh, but it works great. Nice and sealed. I like to flatten them out so that they store good in the freezer. I 
saw a video of somebody using a rolling pin on Ziploc bags. <laughs> I've never done that, but I've always done this. So them, them, them stack real nice in the freezer on top of each other like that. Saves you a lot of room. So I'm going to keep doing this and, and bag all these, um, vac, vacuum seal all these. And then we'll be pretty much done, guys. Something else I wanted to mention again, guys, kind of like the steak bags. I'm cutting these anywhere from six to eight inches long. Um, if, if I've got, if I'm doing about a pound, that's about a six inch or so bag. Um, these marks here are three inches long or spaced out three inches apart. So I'm doing about eight inch bags because I usually do a pound and a half to two pounds of burger. So just something for you guys to remember. And that also helps too. Um, give it gives you room for your bag because it folds into that tray there. And so if you have a bag that's too short, your meat's going to be all up front here, and it's going to be pushing that bag open. You might not get a good seal. So. You want to have a bag long enough to where your meat's sitting out here on, on your table and you've got enough that it curls up into that tray to get a good seal. All right, guys, and with that, we are done sealing. Well, there you have it, guys. Here's the finished product of all that grinding. Like I said before, if you don't have a vacuum sealer, the Ziploc bags work just fine. Just make sure you eat it within the year. Um, and like I said, also, if you don't have a grinder, go get a cheap one. If you only do a couple deer a year, a cheap one will work just fine until you can save up to get a good one. But if you're doing any more than five, six deer a year with one, go and get a good quality grinder. It'd definitely help you out. Uh, they, they take the meat a lot better and spit it out a lot faster. So um, I hope this brought you guys some value. And I hope this shows you guys that it's not that hard to process your own deer. And if you didn't check out the first few videos, uh, the gutting video, the skinning video, and the quartering video, definitely go back and check those out. Um, it, this is uh, showing you guys from field to freezer. So. Go check those videos out if you haven't seen them already. And there's also a full length video if you wanted to show somebody of the process from the time I have the meat out of the fridge from quartering it all the way to the end to where we're at now to the finished product. So go back, check those out, guys. If you got value out of this, share this with your friends, like, subscribe, and we'll see you guys all in the next video.